In today's video, I want to give you five examples of what an HVAC technician could be doing wrong during installation that could be ruining your system. Something that we hear all the time. Folks will say, hey, what's the best HVAC brand? And you'll hear pros in our industry. You'll hear all kinds of folks. They'll say, well, brand doesn't matter as much as the installation itself. In fact, I did a whole entire playlist, a whole entire series on this exact topic where I get into the nitty gritty of every little component of the installation and why it matters and what things can be ruined by the original installer. And so it is true. A lot of the problems that a heating and air system has over its lifetime can be traced back to its birth date, traced back to the original installer and what they did wrong. And in this video, I want to go through five big things. Just break it down. Five big things that I think every homeowner should know if they're buying a heating and air system, things that are huge, they're paramount, they play a big role in how many issues this system will have moving forward. I'll hear folks, they'll say to me, well, what do you mean it's got to do with the installation? Just because the guy was a little sloppy with the install, that's why we're having issues? No, no, no. It's way bigger than that. And I'm going to give you five examples of that. So let's dive into it. Five things that the original installer could be doing wrong that would be causing you problems over the lifespan of that heating and air system. And the first one is one that I don't think we talk about near enough. And it's the fact that today's systems have oils in the compressors and those oils, if that system's not installed properly and it has moisture in that system, POE oil can become acidic. And so I remember having a guy in my class not long ago and he said, this particular brand, I'm having tons of problems with it. Seems like everyone I put in, it's leaking within a year or two. And I said to him, I was like, well, I don't have any issues with that brand. My company, we installed lots of that brand and we had hardly no issues with that brand. And I said to him, are you doing everything you're supposed to be doing? Are you following the instructions and you're doing everything that's considered good trade practices? And of course he said, yes, well, of course, I am. How dare you? And more we dived into it, I started asking him questions like, are you purging with nitrogen? Are you triple evacuating? Are you leak testing and doing all the things you're supposed to do during installation, not realizing that if you're not, if you are cutting corners here, you are the problem. You're the reason those systems keep leaking. That oil becomes acidic. It can eat away at the metals and so on inside that system. And you are the reason it's causing issues. I did this one first because I think it's the one that's broken the most. We're going to talk later in this video about some other things that are big. They're paramount. But this first one is the one I see broken the most. It's the one that when I see homeowners say, ah, I got my brother-in-law to do it and he gave me a good deal. I bought one of those DIY systems. It's all the things that we see the corners cut and it causes these issues. They don't get all the moisture out of that system like they're supposed to, and they wonder why they're having issues later down the road. And they wonder why they had one leak and then later on it sprung another leak and then another leak. And my gosh, I put this brand in and after all these years, it seems like every year I've got to get refrigerant added and I've got to fix a problem. And it traces right back to the original installation. Number two, this one I see broken maybe every single day. And that is technicians, when they're installing the heating and air system, they're just installing a box and they don't care about the ductwork. They don't care about airflow. They don't look at duct sizing. They don't say, if I'm installing this new system, I need to look at everything that's in place and make sure it's all installed properly. I've got good static pressures and so on. In fact, I'll tell you this, a lot of installers in our trade don't even have a manometer or a static pressure meter. They don't know how it works. They don't understand how important it is. And they're just putting in boxes. That's what the term is. You know, they're putting in air handlers or furnaces with evaporator coils. And they say, well, they're just putting in boxes. In fact, I would go one step further and not just blame the installers, but say that homeowners themselves don't think that this is as big of a deal as it is. We'll hear homeowners say, well, my old system worked fine. I don't want you checking the ductwork. I don't want to pay extra to have every everything inspected or pay extra for this or that, or to have things updated or to get those static pressures dialed in. It must be you. You're the problem. Shouldn't you have checked that during the original install? That's what they'll say. And no offense if that's you. I'm just saying all in all that this is a big issue. That's something that the original installer, when that system is installed, if they were to keep in mind. In fact, I can tell you at my company, we had to walk away from jobs because the homeowner, no offense to homeowners, but they wanted to cut corners and they didn't want to dial things in correctly and do things 
properly. It's kind of like the first one where we talked about POE oil, where back in the old days, if we had mineral oil or other types of oil that did not become acidic when it came in contact with moisture, and so guys would cut corners and it wasn't as big of a deal. Today, airflow is dialed in, and a lot of times guys don't understand that it has a lot to do with the efficiency of that system. Years ago, we could just slap in some of the refrigerants we used to use. We could slap in a system and you kind of dial in the airflow. You can make it blow harder or blow less hard and you just dial in that refrigerant and even getting your superheat close, that system was probably going to blow cold. It was much more forgiving. Whereas today, we've got to dial things in perfectly. The refrigerant has to be dead on for it to operate as efficient as possible. And because of that, the airflow has to be dialed in perfectly as well. I've heard all kinds of statistics out there, and I don't even know how accurate they are. I could just only talk from experience that the majority, majority, more than 50% of systems that are installed from the original installer, brand new construction, the ductwork itself is undersized when it's installed. And so I hear you, the old system worked fine. That old jet engine with that burner or electric system that was set up, you just kind of slap it in there and it would work. Whereas today's systems need to be dialed in. They need to be installed properly and it needs to have the properly sized duct so we get the proper amount of airflow through there and that system continues to operate for years to come efficiently, but also reliably and you don't continue to have problems. If you have a heating and air guy come in your home to sell you a system and he doesn't even look at the ductwork. Now, I think there is something to be argued over. The heat and air guy might not necessarily pull out all the instruments, right? He could look at it and from experience say, oh, well, that looks like an 18 inch round duct and I know because of experience that that is good or whatever, fine. But if you got a heating and air guy that just comes in and he just sells you a box, you're going to have problems on a lot of cases. Number three, system sizing. And I have to say, homeowners are just as guilty of this as heating and air professionals. A lot of them will think, well, bigger is better. If I had a two ton, I'm just going to put a two and a half ton in there. When I help people on our website, newhvacguide.com, we have a bunch of folks that I'll have to say, hey, you really need to get a load calculation done, even if you have to pay for it, because you're going down a road where I can see, I'm like a psychic here, I can already see the future you and the issues that you're going to have. Not just issues with efficiency and how loud the system is and all the other ins and outs of this, I can see breakdowns in your future because you're not doing things properly. You're cutting corners. You're buying a box. You're not getting a load calculation done. And there seems to be this trend in our industry. I help a lot of folks on our website and a lot of guys in a different time zones and cities and all across our country, a lot of heating and air guys will price the job before doing the load calculation because, and it's not really in their best interest to take the time to sit there and do a proper load calculation if that homeowner is just going to hire someone else anyway. And so a lot of them will sell the job and then do a load calculation, if at all. They might be telling the homeowner they're going to do one if they go with them. But I'm here to tell you, chronological order here, that you as the homeowner should get the load calculation done before anything. If you're going to have your system replaced, you might say, well, Josh, I always had a two ton. Shouldn't I just go back with a two ton? Maybe. But there's other things at play here. Well, did you update your windows? Did you have any extra insulation added over the years? Have you done any other upgrades to your home? Have you bought new kitchen appliances that maybe they're larger or smaller and they put out more heat? Or There's all kinds of things that play a role in these load calculations. And simply saying the original guy went with a two-ton and I, I would assume that he did a load calculation, you would assume wrong. And the other thing I'll say, these heating and air guys that price the jobs, I get their side of things. They're like, well, listen, if they don't hire me and I just took the time to do a free heat load calculation, I just can't do that. I don't have enough hours in the day to be running around doing that for people. I get it. But the homeowner, I'm talking to the homeowner here, you should get that load calculation done first, even if you have to pay for it, because in the chronological order of things, if that load calculation is being done after you bought the system, they could have priced a, say, a four ton system, do the load calculation, find out you only need a three ton system, and now just put in a three ton because that's what the load calculation came up with. And the price difference between a three and a four ton will be a much more dramatic than the actual paying for a load calculation, if that makes sense. The money that you would spend on a load calculation would save you money in the end because you've got guys that are actually 
pricing the job properly and you're being able to compare apples to apples as you're getting different quotes. And so that's the first three. I see them broken all the time. Before I get to number four, which I think is a huge one, let me stop for a moment and just say, if you are a professional, if you're a heat and air guy, an electrician, a plumber, some other trade, and you own the business or you're a manager, I want to personally invite you to check out our service biz growth groups at newhvacguide.com. Instead of some coaching program, we see all those, right? I always tell people, you think you get a lot of spam callers or junk emails now, start a business. They jump dramatically. And a lot of the junk emails that I get are people trying to sell me their coaching program or tell me that they're the next guru. In fact, half of these people that send me this crap, they're not even in our industry. They've never installed an air conditioner, but they're going to come in and tell me how to run an air conditioning business. I'm not saying they don't have any value to add. I'm not saying that. However, I'm just not going to take advice from somebody that doesn't have what I want. If they've never built a heating and air business from the ground up into a multi-million dollar business, I'm not necessarily taking their advice. So if that's you, if you own a business or you manage a business and you want to grow, you want to rub elbows with other people that feel the same way you do, I don't have a coaching program to sell you. I've got these masterminds, these groups that you can rub elbows with other guys and gals that are in the same fight you're in and be able to exchange ideas, bounce ideas off of one another. Hey, here's what's working for me. What's working for you? And be able to share some of those ideas. I've got a couple of them going right now. And man, if I could put into words how powerful some of our calls have been, I can't do it. I can't put into words how powerful some of these have been. So anyway, check out our website. If that sounds like you, if you want to grow, but you're tired of these coaching programs, from some joker that's never actually done what you're trying to do, then go to our website, newhvacguide.com, scroll to the bottom, click our growth groups and get registered there. We'll have a chat with you, see where it makes sense, which group and all that good stuff. And I'll put a link down in the description of this video. Moving on, let's get back to our list here of things that are bad installation practices. And number four is a lot of guys don't even have the tools when they're installing that system from the get-go to dial it in perfectly. I've met guys that don't even own a manometer, right? They're installing furnaces, they're lead installer, and they don't even own a manometer. They may have used one, they may kind of know what they look like, but they don't even own one. Now, I got to say, how would you know, how do you know that that gas is perfect, that the pressures are set right and everything's good? We talked about static pressures on the ductwork. If you don't even own a manometer, how would you know that those things are dialed in perfectly and that this homeowner is not going to have issues? And the answer is you can't. If you don't have the right tools to do the job right, you might have saved that homeowner some money in the short term, right? You may have been able to sell them a system and save them a thousand bucks, two thousand dollars, whatever. Then the guy down the street, he was trying to take advantage of them, but you don't even have the right tools to do the job right. I remember hiring a guy years ago. He came to work for us. He had been working for a competitor for a number of years and he didn't even know why we were pulling a nitrogen tank off of our truck. I said, hey, go get the nitrogen tank. And he didn't even, I mean, he knew what it was. He'd seen them, but he didn't even know why we were doing it. He had done heating and air work for over five years. And I'm not picking on anybody. If you're, if that's you and you're, you're just like, Josh, I've been doing this a while, but the company I work for, they're not teaching me the right things. They don't provide the right tools. I would encourage you to continue to watch YouTube videos. There are people way smarter than me that go over these things, why they matter, why things need to be dialed in perfectly, why some of these tools, you need to install it onto the system and make sure that all the measurements are right. And then you uninstall it from the system properly. All these different tools. I've had guys that didn't even know how to to use an electrical meter. And again, I'm not picking on anybody. If you're going to install heating and air systems and you're going to install them properly, I think there's a list of tools you have to have. You've got to have an electrical meter. You've got to have a micron gauge. You've got to have a manometer. You need to have a core removal tool. There are a list of tools that you have to have. If you don't have them, you are not installing these heating and air systems properly. There's no way you can. I can't either. If you don't have a temperature clamp, that's another one, temperature clamp. If you don't have a temperature clamp, there's no way you're dialing that system in properly. And so that homeowner's going to have problems 
all because you didn't have the tools you were supposed to have. And so finally, number five, our list of five things that an installer needs to do so that the homeowner doesn't have future issues with that heating and air system. And this one's simple, but it's huge. And that is read the instructions. I have heating and air guys all the time that if they would just read the instructions, they would not be having the problems that they're having. Things like the proper clearances around the system, that's gone over in the instructions. Things like the speed taps on the motor or setting the dip switches properly. All the different ins and outs of installing that heating and air system properly all in the instructions, following the what it says there. I see that rule broken all the time. I see guys using the manuals as knee pads. That's kind of a joke in our industry, but it's kind of serious, right? Guys will throw the manuals to the side or use them as a knee pad and not actually read them. And the homeowner is the one that pays for it, literally. The homeowner had that system put in, and because that guy didn't read the instructions, that homeowner continues to have problems for years to come. So let me know your thoughts. Did I miss one? Is there something that needs to be done during installation and that folks are not doing and it's causing homeowners problems for years to come? I'd love to hear about that in the comment section below. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about how long an HVAC system should last. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.